Listen, man, when I saw this, I was dying laughing. I'm sorry. I was dying laughing when I saw this. Right. But if any of you guys have followed me for any significant amount of time, you know that no matter what, when no matter what your situation is, no matter how much money you make, your social status, whatever the case may be, you're still considered a nigger. You're still considered three fifths of a person under the system of racism, white supremacy. So it doesn't matter. Right. But this here is supposed to be um, NBA Twitter versus NFL Twitter. NBA Twitter is at the top. NFL Twitter is at the bottom with all this back and forth, as you guys know, with Clockwork Orange, a.k.a. number 45, a.k.a. Donald Trump. You know, Clockwork Orange starting Twitter beasts with NFL players, NBA players, world leaders of other countries, you name it. You know, that's clockwork orange for your ass. That's clockwork orange. But this right here represents basically this. You know, this represents the field Negro, the field slave versus the house Negro or the house slave. NBA players, especially the superstars, they are the house slaves. Okay, they sleep in close quarters to their slave owner masters okay they get hand-me-downs of the clothing they get percentages of the of the owners companies okay oh we got these we're gonna give lebron james a hundred million dollar contract okay meanwhile phil knight you know is worth over 20 billion dollars and michael jordan is worth $1 billion. LeBron James is almost towards being a billionaire, but Phil Knight is making the majority of the money when it comes to Nike. Okay. So guys like LeBron James, you know, Kevin Durant, Michael Jordan, they are still house Negroes. Yeah. Michael Jordan's a a NBA owner, but guess what? That money that he got, is from Phil Knight. He can't walk away from Jordan Brand. He can't be like, let me take Jordan Brand and I want to own it outright. No, he gets a percentage of the sales each year, which generates a hundred hundreds of millions of dollars. He makes hundreds of millions of dollars from the sales off of Jordan Brand. But let's not get it twisted. The majority of that money goes to Phil Knight, who's worth over twenty billion dollars. Okay, that is the true owner right there. And, you know, when it comes to NFL players, these guys are the field Negroes. Okay, Um, there was a picture I saw that talked about the NFL contracts versus the NBA contracts. I got it up here somewhere. I thought I had it. I got to talk about this. This is hilarious, too. I thought I had it, but never mind. But um, there was a picture. Oh, here it is right here. Okay. I knew I saw it somewhere. So this is a picture of the roster spots and the average salary of NBA players versus NFL players. You know, the, the key word here is contracts. Okay. You need to sign a contract. You need to abide by the rules set up and written by the dominant white society to get this money. Now, we all know that the NBA is a star-driven league. Without your stars, nobody's going to attend the games and nobody's going to watch the games, pretty much. NFL is different. It's all about the shield, okay? If you're not a Tom Brady or an elite quarterback, you're pretty much replaceable. Um... You know, look at the roster spots is over, you know, over 1600 roster spots in the NFL. You know, the average salary, according to this picture here, uh, it says average over 20 million, 13 players from this uh, post that was on Twitter. I'm not sure what the timeline is. They say that 13 uh, players average over 20 million dollars and then NBA players, 37. Okay. Uh, 2017 cash over 20 million, 10 versus 36. Okay. So again, NBA is the star driven league. 
NFL is all about the shield, all about protecting the importance of the billionaires, white supremacist views, not Donald Trump's rogue of code version of white supremacy, but you know, the traditional white supremacist rules and code of conduct that these billionaires follow. And so you're replaceable anytime. There's no guaranteed contracts in the NFL. You are a super field Negro. Like just like uh, clockwork orange said, he says the referees are ruining the game, which means he just wants to see head on collisions, people getting concussions, uh, carried out on stretches and somebody else replacing that guy who just got, who just died on the field, replacing that guy so they can continue to see this violent game of, you know, CTE, uh, susceptible players and concussions and stuff like that. He's calling the game boring, meaning there's not enough violence, not enough people getting hurt, you know, not enough people carried off in stretchers and stuff like that. That's what Clockwork Orange is saying. It's a violent game. And all of these how all of these field Negroes of the NFL are replaceable. Easily replaceable. That's why there's no guaranteed contracts in the NFL. And you know, you have like I said, I mean, even though I'm exaggerating, you can get a, a NFL player and NFL players for the most part live paycheck to paycheck. And um about the contracts you know, you can get a guy that signed a deal that's worth, you know, $50 million and about $20,000 is guaranteed. They can make up any kind of thing about what is guaranteed on a contract in an NFL player. Sign a contract, next day you get cut off the team randomly. Just anything. You know what I'm saying? That's that's how, that's how negligent NFL contracts are because it's just... It's so dominated by the rules and the president of these billionaire white supremacist owners. So, like I said, it's all about NBA being house Negroes. All right. Sharing the owners resources, the house, the the the, the gas and light bill, uh, the companies the car, the NBA is just all these superstars in NBA are just house Negroes and the NFL unfortunately are all field Negroes. They have no voice. They have to just like this picture. They got to join together, lock arms. Uh, are we doing this right? We, let, 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 let's we, we got to talk about it before we, we, we protest. Is the massacre going to get us? Is the massacre going to fire us? That's what it's about. So this is, it's, you know, this is a perfect representation of the NFL climate. Um, it's been like that since the inception or actually, uh, yeah, it's been like that since the inception of Jim Crow, basically. Um, this is, this is what represents the NFL players today. But again, we live in a system of racism, white supremacy. Okay. And until we replace this system of racism, white supremacy with a system of justice or completely separate from the dominant white society would always be like this. Always. Point blank and simple. All right. So. Oh yeah, this picture with uh Ray Lewis who who kneeled, man. Everybody's going ham off Ray Lewis, man. This was funny right here. They <laughs> this person said, uh, "Well, you thought it was time to pray, but ended up in a protest." That was hilarious. That's hilarious, man. <laughs> I mean, he really did like he really does look like he's about to pray, cause that's all this nigga knows is just praying. I I, I pray, I pray, I pray this, I pray that. You know, just so just one of these dudes that are so enriched and lost in mental illness and mental disorders that I always talk about Stockholm syndrome, cognitive dissonance, post-traumatic slavery disorder. Right. Those are the three main ones I talk about on this channel. And this dude clearly has all three of them. You know what I'm saying? So. uh, 
What's this guy say? Dolphin safety. Michael Thomas started breaking up with talking about Trump, calling him son of a bitch. Hey, but you played. <laughs> I told you, man. These owners, they got together. They had a meeting. They said, what can we do to make sure these niggers fall in line and not kneel in front of the so-called national anthem? They said, lock arms. And like I said in my last video, Shad, uh, the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, locked arm with, with his, uh, his slave players. Yes, I'm with you guys. I'm with you. Remember, I'm your boss. I, I signed your paychecks, but I'm with you guys. This doesn't really mean anything, but this will change the climate of anything. You guys get killed and shot right at, right outside your home. But I'm with you guys right now for the time being, right? <laughs> That's what that means. All right. So, uh, yeah, family, just on Twitter, checking this stuff out. You know, and uh, like I said, I, I'm accepting the fact that Colin Kaepernick will most likely never get a job in the NFL. So, like I said, the NFL owners got it, got a meeting and said, what can we do to make sure these players don't disrespect our flag? Let, let them lock arms, right? That's why the majority of the players locked arms. But when it comes to signing, signing Colin Kaepernick, them dudes ain't going to do nothing about that. <laughs> Colin Kaepernick is still without a job, and I accept the fact that he will never have a job. But I also accept the fact that I will never watch the NFL again. I'm not, no longer a San Francisco 49ers fan. I don't care about the team. I don't care what they do. I don't care if they win a Super Bowl. I don't care. I'm not watching the, Super, uh, I'm not watching the 49ers. I'm not watching any NFL games. I don't care. Point blank and simple. All right. So anyway, if I mean, those are my thoughts on that. Uh, oh, what is this? I'm an Asian American doctor. And today, hashtag take the need to fight white supremacy. Interesting. All right. <laughs> That's interesting. All right. Anyway, family, those are my quick thoughts on that. Leave your thoughts about this uh, picture. <laughs> about NBA Twitter versus NFL Twitter. Let me know your comments down below in the comment section, family. Until next time, Chauncey, a.k.a. The Black Separatist, signing out. Peace.